Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, Autobrief Getting Started, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started using Autobrief with the default settings in Eclipse. Autobrief is an incredible system that can allow you to write long words or phrases in a single stroke rather than the many strokes that it may take to write those words or phrases otherwise. This allows you to use a single stroke entry throughout your job to get long words or phrases, saving many strokes, and ensuring consistent translation results throughout the entire document. You don't have to worry about potentially misstroking a long word or phrase that happens repetitively during your job when you're using single stroke briefs. With Autobrief, Eclipse will automatically suggest brief strokes for words that you've written that meet basic criteria. Using the different Autobrief settings within Eclipse, you can specify whether your briefs show up in a pop-up window, like you see on the right-hand side of my screen, or if they show up in the info bar on the left, or, as you see in this case, both. You can also specify which type of brief appears in each location, you can customize the colors of each type of brief. And as we'll cover in future videos, you can even customize the type of steno that you'll get for your auto brief entries. I'm going to stop the sample that's running in the background right now. And I'm going to go into my user settings to explore the auto brief settings. I'll go to settings, real time, and in this window, you see that I have Autobrief checked. If you want to use the default settings for Autobrief just to give it a try, all you need to do is check this box, and Autobrief will be activated with a default Eclipse settings, assuming you haven't made any changes to them, on your next real-time translation. However, you can click the Settings button to access any of the settings that are available within Autobrief. Some of these settings are things that we'll cover on future videos specifically, like require and accept stroke, expert theory hints, and archive suggested briefs. What I want to focus on in this video is getting the briefs to turn on and customizing the display of those briefs. However, it's important to keep a few specific settings in mind. At the top of this window is suggest briefs automatically after X occurrences. By default, this is set to two, and so, if you write a word or phrase that qualifies for briefing two times, Eclipse will suggest a brief for it automatically, without requiring that you request or ask for the brief in any way. In the bottom left of the window are settings that control the types of briefs that you'll receive. Minimum keys controls how many keys must be in an auto brief. By default, this is set to two steno keys, and so this would require that at least two steno keys on the keyboard are assigned to each brief. You can customize this setting to anything that's comfortable for you. However, no customization is necessary if you want to get started using the default settings. The next option in the auto brief settings window are the different types of briefs and where and how many of those briefs will appear on your Eclipse screen. There are five types of briefs in Eclipse, reminders, theory hints, requests, suggestions, and used. In this video, we are not going to cover theory hints or requests. However, the sample document that I'm going to process for this video does show us reminders, suggestions, and used briefs. These two groups of settings allow us to control whether briefs of each variety will show up in the pop-up window or the info bar. If you wish for your briefs to only show up in one place, you want to make sure that that's the option that you have checked. And so if you only want your briefs in the pop-up window, uncheck info bar. If you only want the briefs in the info bar, uncheck pop-up window. Underneath each of these categories, you can select how many of each type of brief will appear. By default, three of each variety of brief can appear. Since this sample doesn't have theory hints or requests, I'm going to set each of these to zero because we won't be seeing any anyway. The great thing about these settings is that these values don't have to match. 
what I can do is use my pop-up window only for suggestions and use my info bar window only for reminders and used briefs. At the bottom of the Autobrief settings window are ineligible words and theory settings. We'll cover these topics on a future video. For now, I'm going to press OK and OK, and I'm going to translate a file. And I'm going to do virtual real time again. I'm going to uncheck pause and allow Eclipse to start collecting a few autobriefs. So within the first 10 lines of this translation, you see that Eclipse has already suggested four different briefs. These briefs are green, and I know that in my settings, that means reminders by default. If I go to settings, display, in the color selection section, I can scroll down. And for each of the five different types of briefs, there's a corresponding color selection setting that you can modify. And so in this instance, I see that my reminder briefs are green, my suggested briefs are black, and my used briefs are red. My requested and hint briefs won't be used in this video, but they are blue and olive respectively. If I wanted to, I could choose reminder briefs, select foreground, and select a different color to set these briefs to. Additionally, I could select a background color for use with this type of brief as well. I've removed the background color and I've just left my reminders as pink. And so if I look at some of these phrases, such as what is your name, you see that in addition to Eclipse reminding me in the info bar of the shorter way to write the phrase what is your name, Eclipse will also put the brief for what is your name in the bottom of the note bar where your dictionary entries would be displayed. And you see that the steno listed here matches the steno listed in the info bar. And if I go down to another one like incident, you see the same thing. It has the shortened steno listed in the note bar for me. I'm going to go ahead and continue this translation. And soon we should start accumulating suggested briefs for new strokes that are not defined in the dictionary at all. And here you see that the pop-up window has popped up as soon as a new suggested brief was available. And so now in the pop-up window, I have two suggested briefs and in the info bar, I still have my four reminder briefs. I'm going to go ahead and unpause the translation once more. And you'll see that auto briefs will continue accumulating in both locations. And remember that my settings are set so that something must be written twice in order to generate an auto brief. And so once we get down to the repetition of this information, I'll pause it here and you see that many more auto briefs have come up. And according to my settings, I'll see a maximum of 25 suggestions a maximum of 15 reminders, and a maximum of 15 used briefs. And you see that right now I only have one used brief, and used briefs are collected to indicate to you which briefs you've made use of and which you've made use of the most. That way you can continue using them throughout your job without having to be reminded of them by writing something the long way. You'll only get a reminder when you have a shorter way to write something and you write it the long way instead. I'm going to go ahead and continue to unpause this translation. And here, I just had a big influx of briefs that I began using. The word dactylian is one of the entries that I had a suggested brief for, and as soon as I used that word, it moved over to the used brief list. And additionally, when I put my cursor on the word dactylian, you see that since I have used it, this word has now automatically been defined in my job dictionary. And if I open the job dictionary, 
you see that every brief I have actually used has been automatically saved into my job dictionary and a comment indicating that it is an auto brief has automatically been added. This allows you to easily make use of auto briefs if you have to reuse this job dictionary in the future. In addition to the auto briefs that you use being saved into your job dictionary, every time you use auto brief, an auto brief dictionary is updated. This dictionary is emptied at the beginning of each translation, and as auto briefs are accumulated, those briefs are entered into the auto brief dictionary, and then the various auto brief functions make use of all of the entries in this dictionary. If I open this dictionary, you see that the word dactylion still also exists in the auto brief dictionary. Just because it was used and transferred also into the job dictionary does not remove it from the auto brief dictionary. As long as a brief has been suggested, with the default settings, you'll be able to hit the steno associated with that brief in order to write the word or phrase associated with it. You don't have to do any globaling or make any special efforts in order to use these strokes. As long as you have auto brief enabled, Eclipse will suggest briefs wherever it can, and you can choose to use whichever briefs you'd like to use. If you don't choose to use a brief, nothing will happen. None of these briefs or translations will have any impact on your transcript unless you actually stroke them. I'm going to go back into my user settings to the real time tab, and I'm going to hit the settings button next to auto brief. There are two settings that affect the way that auto briefs display in Eclipse. The first is the max width setting. I'm going to change this to a low value so you can see how it works. I'll press OK and OK, and you see that this window has gotten narrower. The max width setting is mostly used by people who have very small screens, or if you have a small external monitor that you want to use just for auto briefs, they are often vertical in orientation, and so you may need to set a max width in order for it to work better on that screen. And if you do have a second screen you wish to use the pop-up window on, you can simply click and drag the auto brief window to any other monitor that you have access to. I'll return to settings, real time, and settings next to auto brief. I'm going to change the max width back to zero. And this time I'm going to increase the transparency of the window to 50%. This will allow me to see through the auto brief window so that I can see the text or images that are behind it. The width and transparency settings of auto brief are totally up to you and you can change them to whatever is best for you. I'm going to close out of this job and I'm going to adjust other auto brief settings to show my auto briefs phonetically and also to show my auto briefs as user text number seven so that they can be in a specific color. I'm going to press OK and I'll go to the display tab and I'm going to choose user color seven and I'm going to change the color of this type of translated text to teal with a pink background. And so if I review my auto brief settings, my briefs should now come up phonetically instead of in steno. And when the briefs are used, that translated text should come up in teal with a pink background. I'm going to re-virtual real time this job I'm going to let this file translate with those new auto brief settings. And you see that now the auto briefs are showing up in phonetics according to the settings that I have in my phonetics tab. And you see that in the pop up window as it accumulates new suggestions as well. And once we get to the section of the document that has used briefs such as alligator here you see that the text is now com coming up as the text type I specified with the color that I specified. And so if you want to make sure that all of your briefs are highlighted in a specific color, it's easy to do so. I'm going to go ahead and unpause it. And we'll see some more used briefs in just a moment. And here you see we have a group of translated used briefs. 
They've all come up with the teal foreground color and pink background color I specified. And this might be a great thing to do if you're a new AutoBrief user and you just want to make sure that you can spot check all of the AutoBrief translations. And again, in order to get the AutoBriefs to come up in a different color, all I did was go to my user settings, real time, settings next to AutoBrief, and where it says show as instead of normal, I chose seven user. Then I went to the display tab and in the color selections window, I chose user seven color and customized the color that I wanted to use. And you can customize it anytime you want to and Eclipse will update those colors to your liking. So whether you want to display your auto briefs phonetically or in steno, Either option will work, and even if you just choose to turn AutoBrief on and use all of the default settings, you can immediately start taking advantage of it. Any of the suggestions or reminders that you see that are easy for you to implement during the job that you're writing currently, you can use those briefs. As you get more experienced with AutoBrief, you can further customize the settings to ensure that briefs are exactly what you need. And those are the types of customizations that we're going to cover in our future AutoBrief videos, along with some of the special AutoBrief control strokes, like AB Modify, AB Steno, and AB Delete, that allow you even greater control over your AutoBrief functionality. But even if all you do is go to your user settings and to the Real Time tab, and turn AutoBrief on by simply checking the AutoBrief checkbox, you can immediately start benefiting from this feature, and I hope that you will. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you'll give AutoBrief a try and start saving steno strokes today. As a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24 7. Tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays, at 772 288 3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thank you so much and have a great day.